Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, welcome back to another episode of Bad Beast Barbecue. Yep, we're out here again, and it's 29 degrees out here. I'm supposed to get up to 37, but it's about 10 o'clock in the morning. I wanted to get this video done and get the cooking started, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to take a look at my technically homemade smoked tisserie, okay? Uh, so I always wanted to have a rotisserie attachment inside of one of my pellet grills. Why? Well, I like, I like low and slow uh, with the pellet control and stuff. And uh, I figured that if I can put a pork butt or some chicken or whatever inside of a pellet smoker, uh, it would still baste itself in its own juices while uh, being smoked in a, you know, with the pellets. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to show you the modifications I made to my uh, Rectech Mini. They don't sell that anymore. It was one of their first uh smokers but i did some modifications to it as a test uh and then i may move over to the uh, old 680 that i have i probably won't modify the 700 um but let me go ahead and show you what we did here on the rectech mini all right guys so here's the old rectech mini and she still works very very well so rectech grills are made really tough okay so as you can see what we got here we bought a generic commercial rotisserie kit that's usually or normally used on a gas grill and uh, so it has the bracket here to hold one end of the rod and then of course it comes with the spit uh rod and the and the cloth to hold the meat on uh to the the spit itself uh over here we have the motor and the bracket and everything so the one thing i did uh because of the limited amount of space in here uh, because the meat may bounce up against the uh, butt up against the, the edge here uh, or hit the grate here that I, I cut the grate that came with the uh, mini uh, in two pieces. And I removed this piece here to give me more room. And uh, this piece had to remain in just to hold a bracket uh, that holds the end of the spit rod. Okay, so anything you put on here, it has to be like a pork tenderloin, a pork loin, um, you know, some small uh, fryers. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to take a pork butt and we're going to cut it in two pieces and we're going to put both pieces on here and let it uh, cook and see how it comes out, okay? Uh, there looks like there might be enough room for a shallow pan here. So if you want to baste your meat or what have you uh, while it's cooking or near the end, then you should be able to do that without having too much liquid uh, accumulate in the bottom of the smoker. However, I still have the the grease drain pan here and so any excess liquid would go into the bucket outside okay so here is the motor that came with the rotisserie i have it turned upside down because of where i wanted the spit rod to be situationed inside of the smoker okay i do have two holes on the side of the smoker one a little bit higher just in case i want to move something higher up into the pellet smoker all right, guys, so let's go ahead and get this cook started. I've been dying to try this out for about a week and a half now since I made all the modifications to the Rectech Mini. So like I said, what we're going to do is we're going to take a pork butt. I'm going to cut it in half to narrow it down. And we'll put both pieces on the spit rod. And we're going to let it cook in the Rectech Mini. And we're going to see exactly how it comes out, okay? So hang around. All right, guys, so we got our spit rod all prepped up. This is what it looks like. Uh, I thought I had bought a boneless pork butt, but it had a bone in the middle of it. So I had to wind up cutting the bone out. So we got three huge chunks of pork butt here. And um, we've se seasoned it. We've uh, covered it with mustard, like we normally do as a binder. And then we hit it with uh, the rub from GQ Barbecue, okay? So the idea is we're gonna put this on the rotisserie and we're gonna let it go. And then once it hits around 160, 170 degrees, I'll make a decision whether or not I want to actually wrap this in foil while it's on the spit to go ahead and see if I can get actual pulled pork from the rotisserie, okay? So let's go ahead and get this bad boy on the Rectech Mini. All right, so before we put it on there, let's go ahead and hit it one more time with a little bit of D-Rub. It's already been sitting around for about a half an hour with the rub on it, so you can see some of the moisture is already being pulled out from the rub. But we're going to hit it one more time just to make sure we got that GQ goodness. If you guys have not tried this 
the rub from GQ Barbecue. You definitely got to try it out. This is one of my top five rubs of all time. Uh, I'll do a video later on of my top five rubs. But um, Jason Ganahl from GQ Barbecue out in Colorado had some fantastic rub and some fantastic sauces. All right. Let's get her on the smoker. All right, there she is, rolling around nice and smooth in an environment full of smoke. So I can't wait to see how this turns out. We'll come back and check this out in about an hour or so just to see how she's doing. But we're going to be on here for several hours. So I might come back and even put a pan underneath it just to start catching some of those juices. Okay, so hey, hang around. Don't go nowhere. All right, guys, our pork butt pieces have been on the rotisserie for three hours now. Let's take a look at them. Ooh, that looks pretty good. I might need to do a little spritzing. Let me give you a close-up look. All right, guys, that look really good. I can tell that the juices from the pork butt is basting itself because it's, it's wet all the way around, so I don't think I'm gonna do any spritzing right now. I like it's gonna have some great bark on it. All right, we stopped the rotisserie so we can check the temperature of our pork butt after three hours we're at 147 degrees 135 on the middle one 142 on the one on the outside so we still got about 20 degrees or so to go before we decide to wrap or not so let's get the rotation going again And give it another hour. All right, guys. So here's our pork butt off the on the rotisserie. It's reached a temperature of 162 degrees. So now I'm gonna do like we do any normal pork butt, and I'm gonna wrap it. I'm gonna wrap it right on the rotisserie and stick it back on. The foil will do two things. It'll help to tenderize it. It'll help keep the meat together, and it will hold in. Some of those juices all right matter of fact let me get a second piece of foil all right gonna wrap this tight and we're going to take this to an internal temperature of about 203 to 207 degrees let's get this back on the smoker All right, guys, so we're gonna get this back on the smoker right quick. Get it back on the rotisserie. Turn it on. And we're gonna raise our temperature to 300 degrees and we'll come back and check it in a couple hours. All right guys, so our pork butt has finally reached 205 degrees. It's nighttime out here, so I got the light on so you guys can see. So we're about to take this off of here. See if I can turn it off. All right. I wanna try to get to the, the prong so I can loosen it up. All right, we got to the prong. Loosen that up. So we can get that, that off. And there's the other one. Loosen that up. We're gonna push it off into our
There we go. All right, we're gonna let that sit in there for about an hour, let it rest, close it back up, and we'll see what we got. All right, guys, so we're done resting our pork butt. Let's go ahead and put it in a pan and let's see how well the pulled pork came out off of the rotisserie. All right, let's go ahead and get this out of the cooler. Got some juice down in the bottom of the cooler. Let's see what we got here. Smells fantastic. There's a lot of liquid here. I know a lot of the liquid escaped when I was poking holes in the foil to try to test the temperature. All right. Let's get rid of this. Let's see what we got. Not bad, not bad at all. Smells fantastic. So we let the internal temperature get up to 205 degrees. I probably should let it go up to about 210 next time. But it, it, it pulled pretty easy. So the reason I'm being a little ginger with it is because I don't have any cotton inserts in these plastic gloves. And while I know a lot of you guys can say, well, use claws, use some claws. It's just, to me, a lot better if you can take a pork butt that's been smoking all day long and just press on it and mash it and it falls to pieces like this one did. So really satisfying. So looks really, really good. All right. Only thing we have to do left to do is have a taste test. All right, guys, so we got a piece of the pork butt. It smells really smoky. It's nice and moist, so that's really nice. So I thought the foil would um, damage the bark on it, but it, it really didn't. It's got a lot of bark on it, so. But uh, let's go ahead and have a taste. Wow, this is really good. That GQ... Uh, barbecue rub is the rub is is really really good so i may need to hit this again with a little bit after the fact to enhance the flavor but this is really good it's smoky it's juicy it's moist and it was just fun to do it on a rotisserie you know i could have just took it and put it in a pellet smoker and let it sit there and do its thing but the action of going around and around definitely helped to marinate it in its own juices for several hours while it was cooking so well, that's all we have time for. Hey, if you guys are interested in a Rectech smoker of any type, check out the guys at Rectech.com. Like I always say, fantastic grills and fantastic customer service, okay? And uh, I'll put it in the description block. I will put down everything that we use to modify the pellet smoker, okay? So I already seen you know, some people had asked me on Facebook, to talk about how I modified it. So it was a simple matter of making sure that your spit is centered in your in the barrel or in your chamber and then drill your hole and set up your, your motor. So it's really not rocket science. So, okay. And uh, hey, if you guys are interested in some Bad Beast Barbecue merch, <laughs> hey, check out uh, our website at www.badbeast.com. We're starting to put recipes out there. So, so check it out, okay. Well, hey, that's all we got time for tonight. So, hey, like we always say, where there's smoke, there's fire. If it's fire, then damn it, there just might be a barbecue there. Hey, as always, hey, we'll see you guys around the smoker. Mm. Nothing like your own homemade smoke tisserie. <laughs> see you guys in the next video.